The range on your EV could soon double, at least that is to say that the watt hours consumed per mile per kilometer could be improved. Could be twice as good, but will they? What are the obstacles and how do we get there? Joining me today is uh, Mark from The Tesla Life, a great uh, great podcast, great show. I've been on it a couple of times and I still think it's great, which is quite a compliment to Mark. I'm Brian. Welcome to Future Oz. <laughs> Hey man, did you know uh, this fun little article you brought to my attention? Here's how EVs could get 200 miles to the gallon. Now, they're not crazy people thinking that these cars consume gasoline. There's a mile per gallon equivalent sticker in the window, and the best ones currently are at about 100 miles to the gallon. And they're saying this could improve soon. Uh, what do you make of this? Yeah, exactly. It's um, the the article talks a little bit um, as if uh, you're an ice driver. Uh, I guess it's coming from that point of view. But uh, what it's basically talking about is the basics about EVs, things that we already know, and I'm sure the audience already knows because a lot of us are EV converts already. But um, this is to more of the masses to let them know that you know what your gasoline car, even though it gets 25 miles per gallon it's not very efficient it's never been very efficient and you know what it's not going to get any more efficient in the future you are burning all that gasoline and only getting a fraction of the energy to the wheels to push that car forward and it talks about how evs have already bridged that gap vehicles uh, with electric motors um, are far more efficient than their gasoline counterparts and are able to uh, push that vehicle forward at a fraction of the cost, in some cases, up to 75% um, more efficient than those gasoline vehicles. So what they're actually even getting to in this chart is they're, they're talking about how even EVs are getting better as time goes along. So just like gasoline vehicles used to be able to get, you know, your you're 12 miles per gallon, they got it up to 15, they got it to 18. Well, guess what? EVs are leapfrogging from 100 miles of uh, gas equivalent to 125 to 200 is where they're heading. So just like everything else, EVs are improving as well. And that's going to make gasoline vehicles look really antiquated uh, if they're not already looking like that today. Well, if you look here, and this is a great chart, the Prius gets so much better mileage than the Civic or, of course, the Jeep Wrangler four-door four-wheel drive. That's Why is it even on that chart? Come on. Um, for comic relief. <laughs> to show you just how bad some new vehicles are. And then... But the Ford Lightning is is so much better and it's huge and it's fast and it's fun and it's it's got it does everything you could want it to to do, except maybe slice a carrot. I don't know if that's an important thing. Some vehicles are capable of doing that. But then you look at the Ionic 6 and the Model 3 and it just keeps going. And like you said, there are ways this number will get more exciting. Uh, and as Sandy Monroe said, we've rung out the ICE vehicle as far as it can go. And he's mostly right. There could be another 2%, 3% efficiency, but we've been at this 130 years. We're running out of room and you could reduce the horsepower again. That would potentially save it, but not always. I had a 93 Lexus with the six cylinder and it got one mile per gallon worse economy than the V8 version because it was geared different because it was working harder than the V8 for some reason. And don't forget the most recent ICE vehicle uh, update is to turn the vehicle off when it stops at a stoplight or a stop sign, and then reignite it once you take your foot off the brake pedal, saving you a minuscule amount of gas and giving it a little bit more efficiency. While wearing out the engine because they were never designed for that. Now, in this article, the headline makes it sound like we got a list, and it doesn't quite provide that. Worth noting, this is Washington Post, where it is very likely that the author who wrote the article did not write the headline. That is a common practice at big newspapers, because the skill of writing a really good headline can be a different skill than writing a really good article. And I would argue that if you were to separate these two, the headline's pretty good and the article's pretty good. They just don't connect as much as I'd like. So as a, as a guide, 
The study author looked at the Mercedes EQXX, a concept car that recently drove 627 miles with almost 200 miles of range left over. Do you know much about this car? I know very little about this car. Well, then you've come to the right channel, my friend, because we are going to have a quick chat about it. This is what it looks like. That looks like something you could produce. They don't plan to, but it looks like something you could produce. And they said, hey, you know, what we're going to do here is uh, squeak out some extra efficiencies and see how far we can go. It's a test vehicle. It's proof of concept for a number of things. So uh, what do you think they did? to get all this extra mileage? I think they probably played with aerodynamics. That would be a guess. Quite um, a bit. I would think that uh, maybe they played with the efficiency of the actual uh, motors themselves, the electric motors. Um, oh. Maybe uh, maybe tweak the tires somewhat. The, the tire tweak is a good one. It's very common on range test vehicle. If you and I were trying to build the most efficient vehicle, we would give it bicycle tires. Okay, maybe not that thin, but they wouldn't be the most practical. They'd be designed for the purpose of the test. We'd be yeah. we'd be studying for the test, not the actual part of it that makes a car practical. So my guess was they went with exotic materials like carbon fiber, which turned out to be correct. Um, they put in an oversized battery, which is somewhat correct. It's only 100 kilowatt hours. That's not ginormous. Um, but the weight still came in at, and we'll get to it in a minute, but close to 4,000 pounds, which is quite, quite heavy for a concept, which means it actually has climate control. It actually appears to have all the safety equipment, the airbags and whatnot, because a normal way is you strip out the interior too. You don't put in any, any creature comforts. And they also put solar panels on it because that's, and they picked up an extra 16 miles over the course of it. And it's only 16 miles because it's so efficient. Uh, so let's look a little further at this vehicle here. <laughs> and we'll see. Um, they didn't remove the mirrors. I expected the mirrors to have been gone. No, for the test, they left them on. Yeah. And uh, this uh, hood emblem, which would induce this much drag, was replaced with a sticker. <laughs> Do you, do you need a hood emblem? No. No, a sticker's fine. So to get that huge range, you could put in just a giant battery. You could make you could put a 200 kilowatt hour battery in this and say, look at me, I can go halfway across the country. That's not necessarily helpful. Yeah. We're looking at you, GM. We are absolutely looking at you, GM. What? Hey, for the people who believe that's what they need, that is what they need. One thing they said is, oh, this little scoop at the back here, that actually only extends when you get to highway speed to improve uh, the airflow. Uh -huh. And they said that might not be legal. No, I think it would be. I think it would be. It doesn't appear structural enough to cause any kind of intrusion into another vehicle. Uh, the carbon fiber is cost prohibitive, but that's such a small part of it. All I can think is that they were actually using some pretty good tech and then if we look at the actual Wikipedia about it, um, there's pretty good information on here. But yeah, here we see the curb weight, <laughs> curb weight, 3,869 pounds dry. What does dry mean? Does that mean without a pa without a wet passenger, a, da a moist driver? <sighs> or does moist mean drivers are the worst. Ah. <laughs> uh, Yes, what is the airspeed velocity of a fully laden model EQXX? <laughs> what if they flew in tandem? <laughs> well, this is a European one. We know that much. So we've got that settled. <laughs> the European one. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not an app, <laughs> But I mean, I mean, it's kind of it's close to Africa. But uh, now here are the compromises that they actually did uh, in part to get it. Horsepower, 200-ish. Would a Mercedes buyer accept 200 horsepower? I don't think so. Rear wheel drive instead of all wheel drive? Do you no. think that's not going to fly either? No. So once you add those back in, you've got, you've lost a lot of it. So what are some ways that some real world ways that we will get to 200 mile per gallon equivalent? We only need another 
50% over some of the cars that are already on the market. What do we need? Thoughts? I think that we need a little bit more in the uh, loss of weight of the vehicle. I think more more recycled or material that that actually weighs a little bit less, but still adds strength to the vehicle, maybe carbon fiber, maybe some advancement in that area uh, would be necessary. Um, I'm thinking in aerodynamics, we're pretty well at the edge of it. Uh, some a lot of are. These cars, some, yeah, a lot of these cars are slippery already in airstreams. But um, oh, yes. some certainly, some certainly like the F Ford uh, 150 Lightning, it, it's it's a brick. It still is a large brick. But um, th there, you know, there is form over function too. So you have to weigh these things. The, it's a brick with a scoop at the back. So there are manufacturers who have a ways to go left on aero efficiency. That should be a pretty cheap way to get some of it back. This uh, Mercedes used some. Uh, fancy shape to their side view mirrors that apparently helped a bit. The We've seen that also on the Cybertruck. Brian from I1 Tesla took a Cybertruck into a wind tunnel, a legit wind tunnel, where they measured the drag and found that mirrors on, mirrors off made almost no difference because they're so small and of a correct shape. So that helps. Uh, so reducing drag, some manufacturers need to do that more than others. Can you think of another way? You said lose weight. That always brings me back to the virtue cycle. If you can reduce, if you can drop the car's weight by 10%, you now can use different brakes, different shocks, different uh, wheels and tires and drop another 5%, maybe 2% at least. And then it can cascade from there. Now you need a smaller battery. Now you can go another 5%. So I just you, thought of another way too. Yes. That of course is to ban moist drivers. <laughs> I love it. I think that's, I think you're onto something and this time it might be mushrooms, but we'll find out. <laughs> so uh, any other ways? So we, we mentioned low horsepower. You could reduce the horsepower, especially for something like a robo taxi. You don't need lightning fast acceleration. You don't want it. People would be very annoyed and a little bit sick in a robo taxi that goes too fast. So that could help. There's tire advancements that are happening currently, uh, lower resistant tires that are still sticky enough to keep your vehicle on the road. So Goodyear, uh, BF Goodrich and others are working on that problem because they know uh, electric cars weigh a little bit more than average cars, but uh, they need tires that are resilient uh, from wearing out prematurely. So there, there's a number of people that are working on that issue. And I would point out also that EVs can weigh more than their ICE counterparts, but that is more common among people who try to make different powertrains within the same vehicle. Uh, if you're building a car that can be a hybrid or a gas or an EV, the EV is going to be the heaviest of the three. But if you look at the weight of a Model 3 and compare it to a 3 Series BMW, they're virtually identical. If you compare the weight of a, a Model Y to a a, a BMW crossover, like an X3 or X5, you'll find it's very close. So, and then of course the Model S is comparable to an S series, uh, you know, an S500 Mercedes kind of thing. So that, that helps. The biggest one, and it was in the article was battery improvements, mm -hmm. energy density. <laughs> great. Let's get the batteries lighter. And I'm not complaining. I'm not saying get on it. You guys, everybody is on it. And that's coming. We've seen the trend and we have no reason to think it won't come. Yeah. How many, how many uh, different companies have you heard over the, you know, the past five years that are coming out with a new battery that's a different uh, chemical compound? Uh, there's so many that are introduced. Very little make it to actual production, volume production. But right. with that many people working on the problem, you got to believe that it, enhancements are making it uh, to the end goal. Without a doubt. I'm not talking about the miracle batteries we hear. The miracle battery, as you know, can go a thousand miles, charge in 10 minutes, weighs a hundred pounds and can do everything except leave the lab. Uh, there, there are two more big ones that I've got in mind. Uh, one is a lot of companies are not very effective with their thermal management. Heat pumps are the way. Tesla managed to make very good ones and now much better ones and they're still improving them. It is an ever improving cycle. As other companies get their heat pump situation sorted out, I think we'll see improvement. 
And another one is rear wheel drive only, or just two wheel drive, single motor cars. I didn't want an all wheel drive car. I have no use for it. It just really doesn't snow here. Uh, I, I don't need it. But that's the only option I had in a seven seat configuration. So I will let you know that uh, here in Southern Ontario, it snows quite often. Oh, does it? And a rear wheel drive vehicle in a Tesla is perfect for these snow conditions. You do need snow tires, but outside of that, the traction control on these vehicles is impressive. It's Second able to, to keep you on the road and it's something that uh, prevents the wheels from spinning and from you spinning out. It's spectacular. And that's not just a Tesla thing. All EVs have that I've ever experienced have ridiculously good traction control because it's so much easier to just feather the power a little bit than it is to try to break a wheel with the brakes. So those are some real world, real practical ways. Um, do you have any others in the comments? I definitely want to hear from you guys. What else could be done to increase the efficiency without massively, I mean, obviously get rid of air conditioning. No, that's not a good no, solution. <laughs> that's not a good solution. And that's part of the thermal management system. You could choose to just leave the air conditioning off if that's your jam, but it's part of the thermal management. It's going to be there either way. I'm hoping over the future that uh, solar will play some sort of a role on the exterior of the car, even if it could be applied almost like a paint over the entire car, being able to pull in electrons from the sun, although it's, it's a small amount today, hopefully uh, with more research, it can become a, a better solution. Well, I think the solution is right in front of us because when I criticized Fisker for its poor execution of its solar system, it Marquez Brownlee left the vehicle outside for a week. It picked up six miles of range. Hmm. That's in part because don't blame the solar panels. There's a practical limit to how good they can get. Blame the small surface area plus the fact that it takes a lot of juice to go one mile in that vehicle. Other people said Aptera seems to have a solution that works. If it comes to market, we'll get a better idea. But Aptera's surface area is much greater on which it can place the solar panels and uh, its power consumption per mile. If you can get, like we saw with that Mercedes, that kind of range out of that little juice, then solar starts to make a little bit of sense again. Yeah. Um, especially if you're going to be parking at the airport and you want to leave the sentry mode turned on. And that's another one, I guess, that we forgot was if the onboard electronics consume less juice, which every year they should, every year you can make your chips a little more efficient, then that also introduces new savings, especially when you're not driving. So that would be good. Anything we're missing? We get it all? No, I think that's it. Oh, well, we're going to get an earful in the comments, Mark. <laughs> do me a favor, would you guys? Head on over to uh, the Tesla Life there. See what they're up to. They do a great show every week, whether you like it or not. That's right. And uh, they'll uh, keep doing it because uh, until their demands are met. So it's like when Sony announced that they would release Morbius every three months until their demands were met. So we just, we met their demands. We just did it because we couldn't. We couldn't do it again. So, uh, yeah, everybody else, like, subscribe. You know what you're doing. Uh, if you get a chance, maybe you could uh, show some support. That'd be great. You don't have to. Uh, you can just like, subscribe, smack the thummy thing in either direction as you do. And uh, stay tuned. Stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on a 627-mile single-charge road trip. Who knows?